something when preparing this speech this week. The speech outlines are just like our human skeleton. They're not a unique design, but they're very important to hold everything together. They're a tried and true format for keeping us intact, literally. This is just like a speech outline. It's actually kind of boring to have intro, body, conclusion every time, but it's really essential for a good speech and holds it all together. Before we start building out the intro body conclusion format, I want to dig down to the most foundation, most basic foundation of speeches. Why do we make speeches? Usually to convey a message. And what is the desired result of speeches? That the audience understands our content and reacts in a certain way. How do we achieve that outcome? By delivering a message in a clear and simple format. It's imperative to organize your speech for clarity and understanding. Have you ever been in a presentation and realized halfway through that you really don't know what they're talking about? I know I have been in those situations and it's very frustrating when you might get a piece of paper or presentation that's just text and no real formatting, no hierarchy. When people are confronted with that situation, either in speech or written form, they lose attention, they turn away, and your brilliant message is lost. My point is this. Your audience can only absorb so much, so try to keep it as clear and as simple as possible so that your audience will walk away with the intended message. So now that we're looking for this elusive clear outline, how do we get there? Well, it's a process. That process may look different for different people, but for me, that process starts with an idea or a speech fragment. I have plenty of ideas, but it's harder for me to build out that speech into a full-bodied presentation that lasts five to seven minutes. So I sit down and start thinking deeply. Who is the audience of my speech going to be? Is it gonna be managers at work, my neighbors in an HOA? or friends and family at a wedding. Why is my speech important to the audience? Will it help them do their jobs better? And what is the intended goal for the audience to walk away with? Do I want more funding for a program? Do I want to move people emotionally? With that, think of what you need to support the end goal of your speech. That's how you move to the style and structure of your speech, which is like the outline. Uh, Toastmasters recommend several different styles of outlines. Chronological, spatial, causal, comparative, topical, and problem solution. Those are a lot of choices. Some examples include comparative. You're comparing and contrasting perhaps two different business proposals or products in a meeting and you hope to convince the audience of which product is better than the other. The problem solution style might be proposing a problem like traffic congestion and a solution like how do we address this on our roads by putting in a bus rapid transit system, for example. It's not necessary that your speech be classified exactly in one of these structures, but it can help. After fleshing out your speech's structure, you want to add some meat to those bones. One of the most important parts of the speech is a good attention-grabbing opening. You want to be able to hook your audience so that they'll have trust in you and listen to you throughout the speech. You can even try to write out word for word or memorize the opening uh, to promote a smoother opening to your speech. It's like your first impression. You only have a few seconds to start your point and keep the audience's attention. A few good ways to do that are with a question or a challenge statement. Have you ever, have you ever been in a situation where you uh, don't know what to wear and you tell a story about it? You can start with a quote. A popular one is, I have a dream that one day, and you continue on with your topic. Or you can bring a display object or a visual. Today I might have brought a science classroom skeleton to demonstrate that the skeleton is like a speech where the eyes and the face of the skeleton can grab your attention, then the neck 
is the intro that leads to the body, and the body is like the spine that has your central theme supported by ribs, the supporting facts or statistics, and then the legs taper down to the conclusion, which are the feet that everything stands on. But I didn't have one of those at my house today. After figuring out how to hook the audience, you want to build your supporting arguments, generally in a list of three to five pillars or facts that, su that support your speech topic or goal. Most people stick to the magical number of three because it's easiest to remember and communicate. With those three main points, you're going to have subpoints that might be examples, facts, statistics, stories, <laughs> and your subpoints have to clearly support your points. You really have to make sure it's clear that the audience understands why and how those subpoints connect to the main points and that they support the greater topic. I think of it like knitting. You have your main needle and you have to make sure that all the other threads keep connecting back to the central topic. Another important part of speeches are transitions. They help bring the audience along as you move throughout your speech and promote better understanding. They can be as simple as, therefore, or, which brings us to, moving on with the speech, which brings us to my conclusion. The conclusion, as we all know, is to summarize the takeaways of your speech and perhaps give a call to action to the audience. What do you want your audience to walk out of the room with? or what do you want them to do as a result of your speech. I want you all to first think before you start outlining your speech. Think about who your audience is, why they care about what you're saying, and what is the end goal that you want them to walk away with. Then you can use that information to create an outline, whether it be topical based, chronologically based, or cause and effect based and then put some meat on the bones of that outline with a good hook, an introduction, the body with three to five clear main ideas, the subpoints that are factual and link directly to the main points, and then the conclusion, which brings it all together, wraps it up, and provides a call to action.